hundred and eighty four thousand all from the correctional institution building fund for capital improvement expenditures. Major projects include the purchase of food service equipment and kitchen renovations to support the agency's enhancement requests to shift food service operations for inmates from the Larned State Hospital to the land to the Larned Correctional Mental Health Facility. Other major projects include upgrades to water softener systems and electrical systems. So now it was the governor's recommendation. The governor recommends 18.8 million, including 7.2 million SGF for capital improvement expenditures throughout the KDOC system in FY 2021. This is an increase of $785,465, all from federal CARES Act funds above the agency's FY 2021 revised estimate. For the KDOC central office, the governor recommends 13.7 million, including 7.2 million SGF for capital improvement expenditures at the KDOC central office in FY 2021. This is an increase of $58,788, all from federal CARES Act funds above the agency's revised estimate. The increase is attributable to an allocation of 58,788 from the federal coronavirus relief fund awarded by the Spark Task Force to support the establishment of a COVID-19 intake isolation unit at the Topeka Correctional Facility. The recommendation includes that 7.2 million SGF and first year expenditures for two year capacity expansion projects at Lansing and Winfield. Moving on to the facilities, the governor recommends 5.1 million, including 3.9 million from the Correctional Institutional Building Fund, 447,465 from the State Institution Building Fund, and 726,677 from the Federal CARES Act funds for capital improvement expenditures among the nine correctional facilities in FY21. This is an increase of 726,677, all from CARES Act, Above the agency's FY 2021 revised estimate, the increase is again due to an allocation of 726,000 from the federal coronavirus relief fund awarded by the Spark Task Force for construction of a COVID-19 quarantine unit at the Winfield Correctional Facility. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's it for FY 2021. I can move on to FY 22 or pause for questions. I think that's enough detail. We'll we'll pause here for questions for uh, fiscal year 2021. Does anyone have any questions for Merle? Uh, Merle, I see no hands at this time. So continue with 22, please. All right, moving uh, moving further down on page 417 of the LILAC document, uh, you'll see FY 2022, the budget year. The agencies request 13.3 million, including 6.1 million SGF for capital improvement expenditures throughout the KDOC, KDOC system in FY 2022. This is an all funds decrease of 4.7 million and an SGF decrease of 1.1 million below the FY 2021 revised estimate. The decrease is attributed to decreased expenditures for routine repair and rehabilitation projects at correctional facilities. Funds for such projects, as I mentioned, are held at the central office uh, in the budget year for planning purposes. The agency budgeted 6.1 million SGF for final year expenditures of two year capacity expansion projects that include that substance abuse treatment center uh, and nursing care facility at Lansing and Winfield Correctional Facilities. What was the governor's recommendation? Governor recommends 15.2 million, including 1.9 million SGF for capital improvement expenditures throughout the KDOC system in FY 2022. This is an all funds increase of 1.9 million and an SGF decrease of 4.2 million. The increase is attributable to the governor recommending an alternative financing plan for replacement of adult and juvenile offender management data systems. The plan includes shifting 1.9 million SGF of operating expenditures from the juvenile services program to the capital improvements expenditures for an initial debt service principal payment on a six year loan totaling $20 million. The recommendation also includes 
a shifting of funding source from state general fund to state institutional building fund for 6.1 million in final year expenditures for capacity expansion projects at Lansing and Winfield. So the governor is recommending those projects proceed forward in FY22, but she is sim simply shifting funding from SGF to state institutions building fund. And that concludes FY22. I can uh, answer a uh, stand for any questions or we can move on. Okay, thank you, Merle. Uh, committee, any questions? Uh, Senator Hawk here, I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, what is the status of the substance abuse treatment program at Lansing? Is, is that up and running or will that start in 2022 once they um, start? I, I assume they have to do some uh, changes in the facility. Mr. Chairman, I can uh, I can address that if you like. Sure. Correct, uh, uh, Senator Hawk. So the the substance abuse treatment facility at Lansing has not has not been constructed yet. They are requesting funds in FY21 and FY22 uh, to begin construction of those. If you'll remember, during the 2020 legislature, they were approved for funding in FY2020 to begin construction of these. However, the governor did a lot that 6.1 million in FY20. So the agency simply requested to shift those fundings to FY22. So they are still two year capacity projects, expansion projects, still would be constructed for the same amount uh, approved last year, simply shifting uh, shifting construction back one year. Um, I'm uh, pleased that that's still uh, an ongoing uh, project and the sooner the better, thank you. Thank you, uh, committee. Uh, Susan Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I did have a quick question on the um, the shifting of the 1.9 million SGF from the juvenile services program. Is that the is that that fund that kind of set aside money from SB 367 that we had said, you know. It, we're setting aside because we're saving money when we made those changes to our juvenile system. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Representative hum Humphreys, you are correct. So that 1.9 million would be drawn from the evidence-based juvenile programs account. Um, so the agency did identify this. So the account is created to support uh, evidence-based juvenile programs in communities. Um, and so a portion of that funding would be used to support what would be considered the juvenile aspect of this of this uh, of this data system. So it's a large project. It consolidates adult offender data systems and juvenile data systems into one. So they're using a portion of the evidence based juvenile programs to support the juvenile component of that data system. Does that make sense, ma'am? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, and would you say that is fitting with what the purpose of those funds were for? I mean, I know we've run into trouble before when we tried to get those funds for other things. So the, the statute uh, simply states that those funds should be used to support community-based juvenile programs. Um, so, you know, this the uh, data system would enhance um, juvenile-based programs. I might turn this over to uh, Mr. Bauman from the Department of Corrections uh, who could add some additional detail. Okay, thank you. If that's all right with you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it is. Go ahead, Randy Bowman. Yeah, Randy Bowman here, Kansas Department of Corrections. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of committee. Uh, yeah, so that money, there is another statute, and I don't have that number in front of you. I can get it to Merle, um, that says in Senate Bill 367 that the secretary may use any available funding source for IT projects. So that's kind of where we come from for this. And then I more materially would add for the committee that this part of the budget was approved by the Juvenile Justice Oversight Committee as a request and a recommendation from them that part of this evidence-based programs funding be used for technology. Okay. Okay, that, that's very helpful. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Uh, committee, do you have any more questions for these gentlemen? Seeing none, Mr. Riedel, are you through with your presentation? 
I am, Mr. Chairman, ready to move on. Okay, seeing no more questions, we'll move on to the presentation of the Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Services and State Hospitals. To do that, we'll hear the presentation from Matthew Moore. Welcome to committee. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Um, you'll find the first uh, page of my uh, capital improvement section on the goldenrod sheet. Uh, it's number 197 with KDADS. Um, so just for a little bit of background, the KDADS over state hospitals um, included in that is um, any SIBF funding for the state hospitals appears in KDADS's budgets and ultimately used for projects at the state hospitals. Uh, so any capital improvements in, is, that are included in KDADS are for the benefit of the state hospitals. Uh, there are, um, there's a little bit of capital improvements in Osawatomie and Larned section, uh, which I'll get to that right after the uh, KDADS. So beginning on the first page uh, for fiscal year 21, uh, the agency requested 18.5 million um, and all from the state institutions building fund for capital improvements. Uh, these fall into three categories. The first being rehab and repair projects for the state hospitals. Um, these are going to generally amount to about $11.6 million. Um, there's a little bit of an increase from last year, uh, just simply to some projects being delayed, um, pushed kind of towards the end of 2020 that then kind of carry over into 2021. Um, these are going to be for re-roofing of several buildings at the state hospitals, replacement of deteriorating fixtures and machinery, um, some secu security improvements at Larned State Hospitals, mainly relating to repairing some of the fencing around the secure hospital, as well as remodeling of the Biddle Building at Osawatomi uh, in preparation to lift the moratorium. Uh, and that was approved. It's approximately $5.3 million. Um, the remaining um, for 21 is going to be debt service for the state security hospital and some debt service for some other rehab and repair projects, as well as some remodeling um, at Parsons for the uh, remodeling of the Spruce building that was approved last year was one of those projects that got delayed into 2021. Um, and the governor concurred with the agency's request for 2021. Um, with that, I can stand for any questions or I can move on to 2022. Uh, why don't you go ahead and move on to 2022 and we'll ask questions when you're finished. Please. So 2022 is on page 198. Uh, they requested 9.1. All from the state institutions building fund. Again, those uh, three major categories, rehab and repair projects, um, debt service for the state security hospital and some debt service for some uh, older uh, rehab and repair. Again, primarily re-roofing, replacement of older fixtures, as well as some upgrades relating to um, sewer, water, or drain systems across the state hospital campuses. Um, this year, due to the governor recommending that the budgets of KDADS and DCF be combined into one, one agency, you'll find the governor's recommendation on the TF page, which is the blue page right after KDADS. Um, and there at the bottom, you can see the governor's recommendation recommendation of 5.9 million um, for the rehab and repair for the state hospitals. Um, I would just jump back to page uh, the last goldenrod page, uh, the 337, um, to just touch upon Osawatomie and Larned. Um, also, as I did mention before, Osawatomie and Lorna do have a few capital improvements that are outside of KDADS, um, and that's why 2021, the request was 2.5 million. Um, and this was primarily related to when we received a bid on their uh, therapy pool project um, that they had submitted. Um, the governor recommended, uh, recommended $1.3 million, and this is just to bring the um, total um, capital improvements back to the approved, um, and they mentioned to us a lot of me that rather than try to submit these sorts of projects on its own, 
work with KDAS to then include it into its five year plan. Um, and as you can see, the in the FY22, they requested uh, $150,000, and the governor recommended $25,000 again with the specific, specific, specification that Ostawatomi really should be going to ads and including these sorts of rehab and repair um, within KDAD's five year plan. Um, and with that, I can stand for any questions. Okay, committee, uh, are there questions? I have one, Matthew. Matthew, I assume if the governor's executive order to combine those two agencies doesn't go through, that the budgets won't change, the amounts will just stay in their respective funds. Is that correct? Yes. So, uh, should the ERO be approved, it, the right now they're listed as one as one agency but then they would kind of respectively go back to their their agency so anything that was with kate ads would be removed from dcf and put back into kate ads okay committee any more questions hearing none and seeing none thank you matthew we'll move on to our next presentation from the department of uh, children and families. And to do that, presentation will be Sharday Kane. Good, good morning or good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sharday Kane, and I am a fiscal analyst for the Kansas Legislative Research Department. And I'll be doing the presentation for the Department for Children and Families. For fiscal year 2021, the agency estimates a capital improvement revised estimate of $100,000 all from the project maintenance reserve fund for ongoing maintenance and repair of the Topeka Service Center. The lease to purchase agreement requires funding to be deposited into the fund for capital improvements to the building. The, uh, the governor concurs with the agency's fiscal year 2021 revised estimate, and that also includes a boiler replacement as well. And that's offered fiscal year 2021. So if there are any questions about that, I can take those or move on to fiscal year 2022. Let's just move on to 22, Chardé, please. Okay. For fiscal year 2022, as my colleague Matthew mentioned, this does include KDADS and the state hospitals in the governor's recommendation. So I just wanted to point that out beforehand. For the agency's request, they are requesting 353825 all from the Project Maintenance Reserve Fund, and most of that increase is attributable to LED lighting. The current lighting throughout the Topeka Service Center is prime, uh, was a part of the original construction in 2000, and the agency plans to update all lights, including in the garage, which is expected to decrease the overall building power consumption. Absent the executive reorganization order, the governor concurs with the agency's fiscal year 2022 request. And I'm happy to stand for questions. Okay, thank you, Sharday. Any questions, committee? Chairman? Yes. Do we have Just an estimate ahead. upon the uh, do we have an estimate upon the power savings? We do. I do not have that information with me, but I can get that information to you. I, I'd be curious to see what what savings are expected. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great question. Any more questions? Hearing none and seeing none. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Next, we'll hear a presentation from the Department of Administration Capital Improvements, and we'll hear from Stephen Wu. Welcome to the committee, Stephen. Good afternoon. Um, can everyone hear me all right? Yes, we can. Excellent. Um, so I believe this report is on a green sheet. Um, the beginning of this report details the various capital improvement projects and debt service projects uh, included in the budget request. Um, as a reminder, the Department of Administration budgets and pays for the debt service for a number of different bonds statewide. Um, you also see that this budget request includes both on and off budget items. Um, on budget items are typically 
counted towards the final total of the agency's expenditures, whereas off budget items are typically not reflected in the um, in those totals because they are categorized that way to avoid double counting in the uh, double counting in the accounting system. So if we'll turn to page uh, 1271, um, this uh, details the fiscal year 2021 capital improvements request. Uh, for 21, the agency requests about 51.4 million in on budget capital improvements. About 40.9 million of this comes from SGF. This is broken out into about 2.8 million for capital projects and about 48.5 million for debt service principal payments. Um, there's only one capital project item included in this request for this year, and that's for rehab and repair for the capital complex. Um, this is a recurring request from the Department of Administration for maintenance, refurbishments, replacements on various um, um, areas of the building and pieces of equipment throughout the capital complex. And as a reminder, both this committee as well as the 2020 legislature approved of this funding um, in the previous fiscal year. Um, for the debt service payments the, uh, of that 48.5 million, um, those are the same items that have been included in previous years. There's about 25.9 million to refinance the bonds. There's about 11.8 million to uh, for bonds related to the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility. There's about 7.9 million for bonds related to renovations of the Kansas State House. And for fiscal year 2021, uh, the governor does concur with this agency request. Um, now, at this point, would be happy to answer any questions about this, or um, I can uh, proceed on to fiscal year 2022. I think we'll stop there in 21 and ask committee if there's any questions. I have a quick question, Mr. Chairman, Senator Hawk. Yes, Senator, go ahead. Uh, in, in terms of the capital renovation bonds and the uh, NBAP, uh, how many more years do we have left to pay on those bonds? Uh, would have to pull up the information. Uh, could I get you that information at the end of this meeting? Sir? Sure. I, it, I mean, uh, ballpark, were those like 20 year bonds gen generally? So we probably have. 10, 15 plus years to pay on, and they're different. I think NBATH is newer than the capital uh, renovations. And yeah, and sure, you can get that to me. I'm just kind of interested in kind of a ballpark on it. No. Okay. Uh, can you get that for him, Stephen? Yes, absolutely. Okay, any more questions on 21? Okay, Stephen, go ahead. Was, did I hear someone? This is Senator Francisco. Yeah, go ahead, Senator. Um, I know that there's been an increase in the payments for agencies for um, use of buildings within the capital complex. When does that start? Is that in fiscal year 21 or is that fiscal year 22? And I'm trying to see how to turn on my video. Uh, <laughs> um, Senator Francisco, to clarify, are you referring to uh, uh, payments for use of office space? Yes. Um, so as a side note, that wouldn't be reflected in this capital improvements budget. Um, you'll see it reflected in um, the off budget portion of the uh, agency's just regular operational budget request. Um, as for date on the increase, um, I'm going to have to follow up with you after that meeting, if that's all right, after the meeting, if that's all right. That's fine. We've seen that in some of the other budget requests. Mm -hmm. And yes, you answered my question. It's not part of capital improvements. It would be part of their agency budgets. So appreciate your straightening me out on that. Thank you, Senator. Any more questions on 21? Seeing none, Stephen, continue with 22, please. Sure thing. Um, fiscal year 22 begins on page 1272. 
For fiscal year 22, the agency requests about 60.3 million for on budget capital improvements, about 48.8 million of this comes from SGF. Um, for capital projects in this year, totals about 3.5 million. Again, it's just for the capital complex rehab and repair. Um, earlier on the year, the agency identified some top priorities, including replacing some handler units in the Landon and Eisenhower State Office buildings, replacing a chiller in the docking utility plant, and replacing a uh, window in the Kansas Judicial Center, among some other projects. For debt service payments, um, for principal payments, there are about 56.9 billion million uh, budgeted for this fiscal year. Um, for the most part, these are the same items as in the previous year. You'll see these reflected in the chart on um, the previous page. There are, however, two additional items um, of difference. The first is that the bonds for the public broadcasting are fully paid off in 21, so you don't see them again in 22. And the second is um, this additional item for the docking state office building. Now, this is related to the agency's enhancement requests. Um, the agency requests both operating expenditures as well as capital improvements expenditures to renovate the docking state office building. If you'll recall, the agency presented several options for the renovation of that building to the legislature. Um, the agency uh, this year requests supplemental enhancement funding for option A, which is the full renovation of the building, as well as the inclusion of a KDHE lab. Um, in total, the project would cost about 155 million spread across, excuse me, spread across a number of years. Um, that includes about 10 million for operating expenditures and about 145 million for bonded debt service. Now that bonded debt service, um, about 10 million of that shows up in 22. Um, about 7 million of that is a principal payment and about 3 million of that is uh, an interest payment. So that 7 million is what you see reflected in this budget document. Um, you'll see that 7 million appears for the agency request in 22. For the governor's recommendation, the governor recommends uh, 55.7 million, uh, about 39.5 million of this comes from SGF. This is a little bit less than the agency request, about 4.6 million less. Um, we see a shifting here between SGF and the state highway fund expenditures. There's about 9.3 million less in SGF and about 4.7 million more from the highway fund. And the overall changes for this uh, year for the governor's recommendation are primarily due to three items. The first is that the governor doesn't recommend the docking renovation enhancement, so there's about a $7 million decrease. Um, the governor also uh, has a about $10 million decrease in debt service principal payments. Um, these are spread across a number of items, um, including bonds for the state house renovation and BAF, as well as just debt service refinancing. And there's about a $12.5 million increase for the issuance of some additional bonds. Um, these bonds, uh, refinance a number of different of existing uh, bonds into a, a um, new categorized new series. So this series 2020 R and S bonds, uh, it's projected uh, balance at as of June 30, 2021 is about 80 point, uh, excuse me, $83 million with an estimated payoff by uh, June 30 of 2025. Um, now, at this point, we'd be happy to answer any questions on the fiscal year 22 capital improvements request, um, or I can proceed on to the off budget um, items for this agency. Okay, committee, uh, do you have any questions? This is uh, I, Senator, Francis go ahead. Uh, Senator Francisco, go ahead. So I'm very interested about the proposals for the docking building. Um, we, I believe we need to start that project. We've seen our Kansas Department of Health and Environment um, do a fabulous job in relationship to um, helping us with our lab results in a very um, outdated facility. So if we can't do it in this budget, I'd like to see that as a topic that the committee would take on to say what is a logical time, a logical sequence for addressing um, both the request from the Department of Health and Environment for labs and what we do in the docking building. 
Uh, thank you, Senator. And to remind the committee, uh, we're not voting on this today. We'll be voting next Monday on this recommendation. Also at that meeting, we will hear more from the Department of Administration on the docking building proposals and also a tour. So I think this discussion will be extended till then. I do have a quick question myself, Stephen, um, in regards to bond ratings with Moody, mm -hmm. uh, in regards to new bonds or refinance of old bonds, do you know the state's bond uh, rating right now? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I can follow up after the meeting with you. Um, each year, the uh, Kansas Development Finance Authority publishes a annual report detailing that information. I can get that report to you after this meeting. Okay, right. I just want to make sure that you find that information and bring it to our uh, February 22nd meeting. Uh, I, will, sure, I will do that. I'm, I'm sure the committee will want to know that bond reading. So, in regards to questions on fiscal year 2022, does the committee have any more questions or on docking? I, I have a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Hawk. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, I, I wanted to agree with Senator Francisco. Um, I, I would like to see us hopefully get a recommendation from our committee uh, relative to docking and, and thank you for setting that tour up again. It will be interesting to compare that to the tour we had a couple of years ago. And um, one thing I might want to do just to plant the seed with our group uh, is to consider looking at, at omnibus whether we want to actually make a specific recommendation on doggy once we see what the consensus revenue estimate is. Um, I keep hoping the vaccinations and some of the things we've been doing uh, in terms of recruiting businesses, et cetera, and opening up the economy may give us a brighter picture where perhaps we could make a decision on that. Though I'm physically conservative enough uh, to probably agree with the governor right now, and I'm just, sort of hoping that we might have uh, better economic news as we come into April. So just a comment for us to think about between now and next week when we meet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative Humphreys, do you have a question? Yes, I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just wondering if Stephen could say a little bit more about that 12.5 million um, uh, that, that the agency didn't request, and, and some of it's that I, I don't understand all the ins and outs of how that works, but um, maybe just a little explanation on the agency didn't request it, but the governor wants to uh, reissue. Just a little, if, if Stephen could speak to that a bit, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Um, the, uh, you can find, uh, Representative Humphreys, you can find a brief explanation on page 1270 towards the bottom there. Uh, but as far as uh, timing goes, I imagine it is um, a matter of timing that the uh, the issuance of this bond occurred after the submission of the agency budget request. Um, as for the contents of that change, it refinances a number of different bonds um, that you'll find detailed on 1270. Most of those bonds are for existing um, uh, debt service refinances. There are also some bonds in there for the capital restoration as well as Memorial Hall and MBAF, but the the lion's share of it is a refinance um, of existing bonds. Okay, thank you. Um, would also like to note that uh, um, Frank Burnham, the director of uh, the Office of Facilities and Property Management is also on this call. Um, and as far as the specific details on any Operational, any operational details um, would defer those to him. Uh, another question, Mr. Chairman, Senator Hawk. Yes, go ahead, Senator. I don't know, relative to the docking building, uh, and I'm trying to find my place here. I'm, I'm missing having the paper in my hands, Representative Humphreys, <laughs> making this work on my computer. But uh, in, in terms of the uh, uh, chiller, uh, that we're uh, putting in another chiller and docking, which I assume we really need to do. Uh, depending on what we do with the remodeling of the docking building, uh, is that money 
potentially uh, uh, still a good investment? Is it something we would need to do regardless of what we did on the remodeling of the docking building, whichever option, A, B, or the other ones we looked at? I assume so, but just wanted to verify that. Uh, yes, my, under my understanding is that the utility of the docking utility plant will remain regardless of what the um, legislature decides to do with renovation of the building. Thank you very much. Appreciate that answer. Okay. Any more questions on fiscal year 2022? Representative Humphreys, do you have another question or did that answer your question? Yes, I'm sorry. I'll take my hand down. Okay. Uh, Stephen, did you have some off committee comments you wanted to make? Uh, yeah, I'll just briefly comment on it since I know we're fairly short on time and I've run a bit long. Um, starting on page 1273, you'll see the off budget capital improvements requests for 21 and 22. Uh, in large part, these are the same uh, items year to year. Um, the capital projects include things like uh, rehab and repair for uh, state buildings, as well as for maintenance of the state printing plant. Um, there's some payments in there for bonds uh, relating to debt service refinancing. Um, there are also some additional issuances of some um, off budget bonds for the uh, Curtis State Office building, as well as the Topeka Service Center for the Department for Children and Families. Um, but none of these are reflected in the final total since they are all off budget. They are all paid for by other agencies. They, they just are reflected here for accounting purposes. Um, okay. Uh, question, committee questions on uh, anything off budget remarks Stephen's made. Seeing none, hearing none. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate your work today. Thank you. Uh, moving on, committee, we'll hear a presentation from the Department of Transportation with uh, Aaron Clausen. Are you with us today, Aaron? Welcome to committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Can you hear me well? Yes, sir. All right. I'll be the fiscal analyst. My name is Aaron Clausen, and I'll be following the Department of Transportation. And as you should see listed on page, 744 on the level yellowish sheets, you'll see that KDOT maintains approximately 981 buildings comprising approximately 3 million square feet. You'll see that at the top of the chart, I've broken out the projects for fiscal year 2021 and 2022. The agency estimates a revised 21 capital improvement expenditures totaling 19.2 million off of the state highway fund. It's an increase of 4.4 million or 29.5% above the amount approved by the 2020 legislature. This estimate includes 14.2 million for projects and 5 million for rehab and repair. The agency states the, the increase is probably is uh, majorly due to reappropriations for projects that were delayed from the previous fiscal year and then project expenditures included in the 21 revised estimate. I've broken these down to you, continuing on page 745. There are 11 locations for re-roofing expenditures of about $1.6 million. Subarea modernizations for four locations of about $7.6 million, a remote chemical storage bunker of $20,000, chemical storage facility of $236,060. On, on the bottom of page 745, you see land purchase expenditures for ex an existing location in Kinsley. And then continuing on page 746, you will see the agencies requesting money for the update of Electrical Bay and Extension District Shop of about $1.2 million off from the State Highway Fund. This includes real, uh, a project for the reallocate, or, sorry, relocation of the sub area in Newton for about $2.6 million, the construction of a District 2 annex for about $907,500 from the State Highway Fund. On the top of page 747, you will see that the governor does concur with the agency's revised fiscal year 2021 estimate for building projects. With that, I'll pause for a moment, sir, until I move on to 2022. Questions on 21, committee? Hearing none, go ahead and continue. On the top of page 747, you will see that the agency requests 2022 capital improvements expenditures totaling $15 million, all from the State Highway Fund. It's a decrease of $4.2 million or 21.8%. It 
The request includes 10.9 million for projects, 4.1 for rehab and repair, and the decrease is primarily due to additional projects in 21 that are not repeated exactly in 2022. I've broken this down for you. That includes on page 747, re-roofing expenditures for 11 locations, sub-area bay modernizations for four, council storage facilities of 244,644, land purchase at the to expand existing locations about $45,000, Continuing on to page 748, you will see an update of an electrical bay and extension district shop for about $1.6 million. Reallocation of a sub area or reallocation of an area and construction office in Concordia for about $1.6 million. And the governor does concur with the AG's 2022 request. I will let you know, uh, senators and representatives on joint billy, that the agency staff is available. Robert Fuller, the maintenance staff engineer is here, as well as Ben Cleves, the chief budget officer are available online, but I will stand for any questions at this moment. Okay, committee, any questions for Aaron or Robert Fuller or Ben Cleves? Hearing none. Aaron, it seems like you've answered all the questions that might may have come up. Thank you, sir. Okay, committee moving on, we'll hear discussion regarding historic sites, sustainability. And to hear that, we'll go to Jenny Chin. Are you with us, Jenny? Welcome to committee. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Mr. Yes, Chair, ma yes. Okay, yeah. um, this was brought up in our in Senate Ways and Means, and it was asked at what point do the state historic sites, of which we have 17 in the state, um, are serving their purpose, are they cost effective, a series of questions like that is the way I understood it to be. The last time the agency was asked to do a report like this was in 2008. And at that time it was for um, Senate Ways and Means and no legislative action was taken at the time. Um, but the agency used that report to change its approach a little bit to uh, the historic sites. So uh, we made the decision to try to use less SGF funding and find more other ways to fund the site and to operate more efficiently based on the audience needs and to obtain grants whenever possible. I'm pleased to tell you since that date, we have done all of those things. Um, our financial strategy for using the sites, all of which should be pointed out, were taken not by, were, were given to the agency, not at our suggestion necessarily, but by the legislature, because they deemed each of these sites to be of critical historical um, importance. And so our funding strategy going forward was to work with the legislature at the time to establish a fund of $250,000 uh, for of SGF for an, an annual allocation to be used for all those sites for emergency repairs and preservation. Many of the specific requests that you often see in our five-year plan are funded by more than one funding source. In essence, when we do have SGF, we try to match that with outside funding. And by that, we mean match it with grants or actually private fundraising with the communities in which these sites are or other interested people. Um, and we try in some cases not to use any SGF at all. Um, we have developed, um, one of our goals was to develop private endowments for some of the sites. And there's three that we have today, Hollenberg, Cottonwood, and Hayes, that all have their own endowments. So many of the costs are paid for by those. Um, we do a lot of private fundraising. Um, we have accounts that have over $10,000 uh, for Constitution Hall, Fort Hayes, Good and Know, and Call Mission, where we're uh, reinterpreting it right now. And it is 100% funded by private donations, primarily from uh, the community of Council Grove in which it sits. We also have other smaller uh, funds. So we, um, we also have changed the way we operate since 2008 those sites where some of them operate in partnership 
Um, and uh, one Cottonwood Ranch, which has an, a very large endowment, is run by a non-for-profit, Good No House in Riley County. Uh, the county is our partner. John Brown Museum, the city is our partner in Osawatomie. And Shawnee Indian Mission, we are in partnership with the city of Fairway. So I think what I was asked to come here to do was to explain a little bit of that. Um, but I think there was a question about do we think or do, uh, does the state think that we're getting the most out of the money we put in and are they sustainable? Well, from my point of view, since we have changed the way we operate them so dramatically over the years since that 2008 report, I would have to say from my perspective, it's yes. Because whenever many of, when you look at our five-year improvement budget, many of the things you see are not state general fund, except for that 250,000. And we think we make a very good um, use of that. And if there were to be, if you want another report, and I think that's why I'm here to clarify if you do what you'd like from us, is that um, we would be happy to give you any information you need. But if, uh, if you could do it, maybe give us some times because it, from my experience of working on the 2008 one, it took, a, it took several months to pull all that information together. So that I think is in a nutshell why I'm here. And um, I would turn it over that if you do want a report from us, if you could clarify exactly what you're looking for and maybe ask us to bring it to your first interim meeting after session, we would be happy to try to do that for you. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Uh, committee, we can't, I don't think we can make a motion to formally request a new sub uh, sustainable report, but you might be thinking about it and we'll discuss it at our next meeting on Monday the 22nd. But for today, does anyone have any questions from Jenny on her uh, comments on sustainability for the Kansas Historic Site? Uh, Senator Hawk here. Could I make a comment, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Senator. Uh, thank you, Jenny, for a good report. Just a suggestion, since this kind of came out the, of the Senate Budget Subcommittee, and I think it was uh, very appropriate to have our Joint Building Committee hear this first, uh, I think it might be helpful if you just did a short written report to uh, Chairman Bellinger and uh, I know uh, uh, Majority Leader Solenthrop was on our budget subcommittee that day, or maybe it was just, I, actually, I think it was a whole uh, Senate Ways and Means. So um, it probably would be up to whether Senator Billinger wanted to get a verbal report, but I think a report very similar to what you did with us would be good to give to the Senate Ways and Means Committee. Uh, and let Senator Bellinger, Chair Bellinger, decide whether it ought to be a, a short written report. Uh, and I know to do a more substantial report, as you said, would take quite a bit more time and maybe even an interim thing. But I, I think what you shared was very helpful, certainly helped me uh, understand uh, that you've, you've been on the job since uh, 2008 and done some wonderful things to get buy in on a lot of these sites. And I would have thought initially it was just the incredible job you did trying to get the money for the Topeka Museum that you've done a great uh, fundraising job on. And so uh, I think it would be good for the rest of the Senate Ways and Means and maybe uh, the House Appropriations too as a whole to, to get a better perspective of all the 17 sites and what you've done in some of those specific areas. I don't think it has to be a long report. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you, Director Chen. Thank you, Senator. Uh, yeah, Jenny, I think we just want the same report to go to appropriations also. Okay. So do I just send it to appropriations to the, to the chair? Yes, please. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, committee, any, any more questions for Jenny? This is Senator Marcy Francisco. Um, I just want to say thank you for all the work that the Historical Society has done to preserve these sites. And I know there's a lot of difference depending on the community 
that they're in. Um, so I'm so pleased that the Shawnee Mission Indian site has been adopted by um, that Fairway community. But so we need to look at both sides of the equation, where the sites are and what the communities um, can help with. And I think absolutely, I've seen that they all want to be involved and help. So I think sustainability needs to be matched to the resources that are available. available. Okay, good comments. Any more questions? Okay, hearing none, six, was there a question? Hearing none, seeing none. Thank you, Jenny, appreciate you being here today. You're welcome. Our next and last presentation is a change order from Wichita State University. Uh, Frank Burnham, are you here? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, this uh, change order is for Wichita State University. It's uh, Wolsey Hall. It's the new School of Business. It's a $28 million project. And uh, statute requires that all change orders in excess of $125,000 uh, first come before this committee before the Department of Administration can approve that change order. Uh, this change order is $149,951, and it is to extend all new walls uh, from the bottom of the ceiling up to the existing deck and required electrical and, modif and uh, ductwork modifications in order to achieve that. And this request was in order to significantly improve the, the sound transfer and isolation uh, between these offices by the university. The uh, change order will be uh, funded out of the project contingency, uh, which was originally done with bond money for the university. And that concludes my comments. Okay, uh, committee, any questions for Frank? Um, I have one, Senator Hawk. Go ahead, Senator. Uh, uh, having not done a lot uh, in my school district, we, we always had regular change orders whenever we were in a building project, but uh, I'm always curious about uh, why the architect uh, or the engineering company didn't know there was a sound uh, issue with the offices. Uh, great that they discovered that, but uh, why wasn't it discovered in the uh, original construction uh, uh, plans? Senator Hawk, a member of Wichita is not here. I was not party to those conversations. Um, okay. I can't tell you architect, however, uh, that's probably the easiest way to do it for a common area of plenum return above ceiling. Um, but yeah. I would have thought the design team would have uh, consulted with the university and made that recommendation early on so that you're not paying a change order with Marco. So. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's that big a deal to make a big deal out of it. I'm just, um, my own experiences, I was, always amazed at the things we would discover that needed to be changed that I would think uh, should have should have been in the original plan. So, uh, but likewise, glad you catch it before the building's built. So thanks. Any more questions for Frank committee? Oh. Okay, seeing none, hearing none. Frank, you were probably on earlier and, and understand that, uh, you know, consider your change order submitted, but we're not going to vote on the recommendation until we meet again next Monday inside the State House. Very well. So, committee, we're pretty much right on schedule at one o'clock to adjourn. I want to remind everyone that next Monday at 11 o'clock, we will have a tour of the docking building. You'll meet at the main entrance on the east side of docking at 11 o'clock for those that want to tour. After the tour, we will commence our, our uh, building construction committee meeting at noon. It'll be changed to room 159 and uh, you'll get notification of all this. Also, at February 22nd, we'll make uh, recommendations for all the capital improvement budgets we heard today and make those formal. And that's about it, except for March 1st, the next Monday. 
there's most likely going to be a tour of the KDHE State Laboratory out of Forbes Field for those that are interested. So we'll be talking about that on Monday too. So hearing no more business before the committee, I declare we are adjourned. But, Thanks for Ms. hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, just uh, I, I, one question, question, if I could, Mr. Chairman, just um, at the last meeting, it sounded like the members that were interested in the docking tour were uh, Representative Humphreys, Representative Owsley, and Senator Hawk. Um, was, I just wanted to make sure there wasn't someone that I had missed. Yeah, we need to take a quick roll. I, I've been there, and I don't think much has changed since I've been there. Is there any other committee members wanting to take the tour? We just kind of need a head count. It appears not, Merle. All so, right. Mr. Mr. Chairman, could I ask one question? Sure. Um, yeah, thanks. We just heard that we were going to meet on the east entrance, but we had also talked about walking through the tunnel. Is that a is that an option? I think uh, the the folks at the tour will walk maybe walk you back over to the state house when the tour is done through the tunnel. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments about anything? Can we request a golf cart to come back? <laughs> For some of us older people, thank you. I, I think we need to know just exactly how far away that is, Senator, so we'll probably walk it. You know, when I officed in docking, I was getting my 10,000 steps in every day and a little more. Now, maybe I need to go back over there to office. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, hearing no more comments, I declare we are adjourned. Thank you.